Okay, guys. So, so we are here uh, to know about what is this space exploration and how uh, this space exploration nowadays getting improvised <coughs> with the machine learning. Okay. So we are here to outline the recent advancement happening in space exploration and how particularly this artificial intelligence helping the space exploration to thrive. That's what exactly we are going to discuss in this session. And uh, yeah, before we begin, yeah, why there is a need for space exploration? Okay, so we need to know this. Why there is a need for space exploration? I clearly mentioned the need of doing the space exploration in the last session itself also. But uh, once again, I, I, I want to recall it. Why there is a need for a human being to do space exploration particularly there are so many issues to uh, like uh, putting the attention on the earth happening on the earth see uh, we human beings are like always very eager to apply the intelligence okay we human beings uh, there was a research done by a group of people, group of aspirants, uh, decades before, centuries before, regarding the space exploration, when most of the people wondered about to explore Earth alone. Few set of people connected Earth to the deep space. Okay, they knew how to connect, and they released so many uh, findings, so many outstanding informations. Because of that, we are now capable to send uh, spacecraft and deep space probe. We are now able to make satellite revolve around the orbit so that we are enjoying the digital services. Okay. We are enjoying digital services. And uh, you know what? Due to the space exploration, what the space agencies nowadays doing, nowadays doing the medical unit, the medical society is also getting benefited. So there's a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover in the name of space exploration. You know what? Um, uh, when when people are searching uh, to deposit on a lunar, what should be their need? Definitely, it's an inspiration. It's a like a feel that you are exploring the lunar surface. But apart from that. We are capable to mine minerals from lunar. Okay, if you are able to build a colonization on lunar, we are able to mine the lucrative resources available there. We can ship the resource back to the earth so that we human beings will get the benefit. See, for example, helium. Helium is used in medical instruments. Okay. Helium is used in medical instruments a lot and radiation minerals. Okay, everything we can mine from the deep space objects, say moon, say asteroids. Okay, these are like carrying vast minerals. So we are doing space exploration to benefit ourselves. So we can't just stop it. So we have to give our focus collectively to the earth happenings as well as the space happenings. Okay, this is how we have to build our interest, build our area of research on both so how particularly this uh, machine learning helping the space exploration okay how particularly that's what we are going to discuss in this session okay yeah regarding ai regarding ai what is this actually ai what is this see ai is nothing but how to enhance the intelligence in a software applications, how to improvise smartness in a software application. Software applications are meant for fulfilling the need of a human being. Okay, for example, systematic literature review. There are some machine learning applications nowadays evolved for systematic literature review. What is the outcome? The researcher can have the consolidated information without confounding 
okay they they can save their time to have valid informations from number of research articles in a quick time so software applications are meant to support the human being okay that is why everywhere we are now finding software companies digital companies software companies uh, building applications to support the lifestyle of the human being to ease the work of a human being so these software applications are getting the intelligence these applications are getting the intelligence with the help of ai getting the super intelligence with the help of ai say prediction say prediction so if you want to predict what would happen by tomorrow in a climate you could be saved okay maybe there will be a natural disaster would happen so if you are warned right now maybe you could save yourself okay so how smart how intelligent we have to predict the things happening around us and how to use the software applications there to predict everything whatever happening around us okay especially for utils and uh, resources this is where we use artificial intelligence a lot and nowadays everyone familiar about uh, chat gpt uh, from open ai and llama language models from meta ai and bard from google <clears throat> okay so you can ask anything you can ask them to write a code you can ask them to produce a business report you can ask them to create a concise uh, research outcomes okay you have to give the prompt it's all about prompt engineering okay so the large language models are built on the top of recurrent neural network the baseline of the large language model is nothing but recurrent neural network that is one of the deep neural network technique deep learning technique because of the ai only this is possible okay so the usage of ai and definitely we can't deny its existence and uh, don't worry it won't hurt us okay in my opinion it won't hurt us because i am a machine learning engineer i develop different products but those products are meant to help the human being not to produce a disaster between them so definitely ai will benefit human being and of course ai is everywhere and ai is also in the space exploration okay and coming to this ai um like i told already ai is producing super intelligence to the software applications and this ai is powered by this ai is powered by machine learning i mean we use machine learning tools and techniques to create software applications coming with artificial intelligence coming with artificial intelligence okay and coming to deep learning deep learning is nothing but subset of machine learning deep learning is nothing but subset of machine learning so there are different types of machine learning techniques out there okay but deep learning is quite famous because uh, deep learning improvise the scalability the heavy duty applications and uh, durability okay. and when it come to production maybe if you are maybe in the beginning if you are using very lightweight uh, models definitely you have to upgrade yourself into deep learning when your model is uh, experiencing more data due to the reliability concerns we have to update our whole applications into deep learning that is highly required so learning the deep learning is very very important that is why deep learning is known as subset to the machine learning and this is the whole history of the ai people and yeah i guess there's a doubt right are you facing any issues in my voice okay no doubts super hard here yeah okay now coming to the different uh, types of machine learning 
see here the list i am i am giving is based on the task oriented okay so machine learning tools and techniques could be categorized into three types one is supervised learning <clears throat> then unsupervised learning then reinforcement learning okay so supervised learning what is this supervised learning see like i told already <clears throat> ai is something known as a digital brain digital brain okay it is nothing but a brain so just like how we human beings explore the environment okay if, if we want to take decisions on a particular matter we need to have a proper knowledge about that matter or we uh, should have been experienced similar matters earlier then only we can have the right decision at that occasion so ai is also like that it's a digital brain it has to see the environment it has to see the scenario it it need to know uh, what kind of context it is going through what kind of context it is going through for that we have to feed more data to this ai we have to feed more data to this ai so this ai will learn on data once it got educated about the data about the scenario about the environment it will start to take decisions with respect to the context of the data we fed there this is how ai works coming to supervised learning coming to supervised learning it's all about providing data with some sort of hint with some sort of supervision consider there's a tutor consider there is a tutor standing nearby the model and trying to teach everything about the uh, data to the model consider like that that is why it is known as supervised learning coming to unsupervised learning coming to unsupervised learning no such supervision is given no such supervision is given but the data is given the data in humangus rate is given say peter scale the humangus data is given the model has to find the patterns about the data just because there is no supervision these kind of approaches or learnings are known as unsupervised learning unsupervised learning and coming to reinforcement learning okay reinforcement learning is all about dealing with very less data to be honest okay. you don't have to feed the data in excel or in images instead you have to produce the environment you have to create the simulations where you have to mention your agent that agent will learn the environment and whatever you want that agent to perform with accuracy with super intelligence the agent will perform after the training that's how reinforcement learning working out that is why autonomous navigation robotic navigation robotic movement path planning okay control system optimizations everything nowadays powered by reinforcement learning now coming to the application of supervised learning there are two types one is classification task and the other one is regression task for example this asteroid asteroid is choosing a collision course towards the earth for example okay so we have a software application with super intelligence if that application detect the type of the asteroid okay for example whether the asteroid will hit the earth or not whether this asteroid will become a sort of to earth or not this is nothing but predicting the categories or predicting the type what would be predicting the type okay so if your application predicting these kind of types or groups or categories then this process known as classification process classification predictive analysis coming to the regression part okay so we are now uh, trying to track and predict the dimension of the asteroid instead of predicting directly the type of the asteroid whether to become a sort of or not a sort of we are now trying to predict the dimensions of the asteroid so that other applications pipeline in your in our pipeline there are another pipelines that by pi pipeline will take the data of both the asteroid diameter and that pipeline will decide okay just because diameter is this much bigger definitely this will become a sort of like that okay so this is called regression okay so in the regression is where 
we are predicting the numerical values numerical values about the particular object i mean asteroid in our case coming to classification we are dealing with the labels or groups or categories okay that is why it is known as classification so under the supervised learning we can do these two processes coming to unsupervised learning for the same criteria so there is a asteroid and we we track the asteroid and we detected the asteroid okay and there are so many asteroids for example uh, there are asteroids in the closer bound to the earth known as near earth asteroids asteroids in the extreme far bound are known as like uh, another belt asteroid the far away asteroids so we have the collective data on that collective data if you want to different shape if, if you want to produce the clusters okay if you want to produce the clusters uh, on that data in such a way like uh, uh, this part of the data is belonging to near earth objects and this part of the data is belonging to far earth objects like that if you want to classify the whole data into certain categories you would go for unsupervised learning you would go for unsupervised learning okay so this is the this is how the ai works ai tasks are broken into these sub tasks and machine learning is pretty much associating here to achieve these tasks okay yeah and simply how we can differentiate uh, here the machine learning stands for classical machine learning approaches okay machine learning stands for classical machine learning approaches deep learning is starting from neural network so how come the classical machine learning approaches differs than deep learning see there's a car so we are trying to extract the features of the car based on that we are classifying the image or video where we have a car whether that one the, the, that one belonging to a car or not belonging to a car so this is known as very simple task very simple uh, process okay but coming to deep learning we are doing the same but we are classifying the given object whether it's a car or not but along with that we are extracting the features too we could able to tell okay this car is in white color this car is moving with the speed and this car is having a windshield okay like that we can add extra features we can add extra features along with the classification okay this is called deep learning taking the deep insights about what we are doing classical machine learning on the other hand starting with uh, logistic regression linear regression support vector machining bagging boosting algorithms deep learning is starting with neural networks recurrent neural networks convolution neural networks and advanced layers complex high complexity models okay so this is how we differentiate the ai in in technical wise okay previous one is about strategy this thing is about how complexity these uh, two approaches first one is classical machine learning then the later one is deep learning okay yeah and regarding the python how particularly python is assisting ai okay, there are so many frameworks already produced to produce deep neural networks to offer the framework for classical machine learning as well as to offer the numerical operations happening in ai okay so these are all some sample packages and frameworks i listed here developed on the top of python okay helping the ai and machine learning so python is pretty much helping the ai to thrive we, we used python a lot to do data analysis to do data science as well as deep learning approaches so collectively everything is known as i mean data analysis data science deep learning collectively known as artificial intelligence when you are building an application by using these tech stacks okay guys so so far we discussed about what is ai <coughs> okay. so far we discussed about what is ai how come this python is helping the ai how this ai is having its basic types basic types in strategy basic types in tech stack 
see supervised learning unsupervised learning and uh, the last one reinforcement learning is the biggest strategy types tech stacks when it comes to tech stack there are huge two types one is a uh, uh, classical machine learning approaches and another one is deep learning approaches okay. and this deep learning is working well with reinforcement learning and created a new domain known as deep q network deep q network okay this deep learning is working with i mean deep learning one of the deep learning tech stack cnn is working with the image data video data to produce computer vision so recurrent neural network what i mentioned under the deep learning is working with our text data okay text data speech data to create nlp applications natural language processing applications classical machine learning on the other hand pretty much associating all the task okay we should know how to do it we can do it pretty much associating all the task but in very low level and very less complexity if you want to scale our application to a broader level we have to jump into deep learning that's the only option okay because the model will uh, model will decay in its performance when too much of data is put up there and definitely we will fail to fail to optimize it and obviously deep learning is the one helping a lot to handle the very very big data nowadays okay guys so this is a story with artificial intelligence python machine learning strategies types tech stack types reinforcement learning deep learning and everything now we we started with space exploration right i told you about why we have to do the space exploration because we have to enjoy the digital services okay we have to enjoy the digital services we have to have highly intelligent applications so space is all about doing a prop doing investigation doing a space survey into a place which is totally unknown to any one of the human being living on the earth so we want machines to think intelligently by itself we want systems to think intelligently by itself okay for these reasons we are using ai in those devices in those digital systems a lot and lot okay we are using ai in rockets we are using ai in spacecraft we are using ai in the data what satellite producing okay and we are using ai in rovers so when it come to flight to vehicles there are so many types aircrafts rockets satellites deep spacecrafts okay we use ai a lot and lot here people that's what exactly we are going to check in the further uh, rest of the session i hope there is no doubts as of now so far let's uh, jump into advancement of ai in space exploration so i am going to give you few case studies as well as i will try to cover the domain part okay how exactly we use ai in space exploration okay i will try my level best yeah starting with the pattern recognition process pattern recognition process what do you mean by pattern recognition process this is nothing but information extraction from a given data or insights extraction from a given data that is known as pattern recognition so these information insights are known as features features okay what do you mean by features for example what are all the features on my face as of now it's watering a lot and lot that is one of the feature okay i have a glass on my face okay another one feature my face is round another one feature okay so th these are all the different notions you can have about me about my face this is known as features so when you are giving a huge data when you are giving a huge data and that data come up with some unwanted informations how come you can have the valuable informations out of it how come you can feed those informations to the ai so that ai would understand these all the insights and these all the scenario these all the patterns so that a similar case might occurs again 
how I can take a decision. This is how the pattern recognition is working out. So AI, when, when it comes to learning the data, it won't deal with all data. It will extract the features. Those are informations. Based on those informations, it will learn the insights about the environment, about the scenario, about the criteria. Then when the similar situation arises, it will take the decisions in a right way. This is how AI works. This is known as pattern recognition process. How in space tech, this is helping. Think about uh, flight vehicles. Think about the flight vehicles. There are number of sensors available. Number of sensors available. These sensors are taking readings about the environment. Just imagine there's a rocket which is cruising. Okay. So it has to maintain the stability in your right way. Sensors are taking reading about the pressure, temperature, the environmental criteria, the wind turbulence, wind pockets, and everything. Those data is getting pre-processed. Why? Because those data sometimes come up with some data totally not record. So we have to pre-process those data. We have to extract the information, what we want exactly. Okay. Then those informations, once again, making sure by classification, then the flight computer will take those informations based on that control system is getting tuned. Okay. Where now to tune the control system also, we use the AI nowadays. That is a different story. But here, how exactly pattern recognition is working out? We need to learn the skill of data analysis. We need to learn how to how to use the data analysis techniques to create an application. That's all about getting into the data, extract the features, and convert that into useful information. Okay. So this is where we use the AI lot and lot in pattern recognition process. Okay. So we we use satellites to take images from the earth, images from the deep space certain informations totally not a valuable informations just coming into the scenario and filling the space okay that won't help we need to know which data is very good or from a collective data we need to know how to extract the collective insights okay so these are all skills comes under pattern recognition people okay yeah and coming to predictive modeling so you might have heard about path planning. Okay. Uh, think about an aircraft. Think about an aircraft. So when the aircraft is leaving the port, airport, there's a GPS system is coming online. GPS system coming online. The route map, the pre-programmed trajectory, everything is already visible. Based on that only, pilot will maneuver the aircraft. Based on that only, if autopilot system enabled, that will uh, maneuver the aircraft. What if there's an emergency criteria? What if pilot is un unable to help? Autopilot system taking in command. This autopilot system during the emergency situations, if that system has to, has to draw a path to reach the safe zone, Based on what it will draw a path, based on the GPS data, right? Based on the geospatial informations, based on the environmental details, it has to do the right path planning, which included the fuel optimization, which included the overall instrumentation supporting ability and everything. So flight computers has to take a decision. So in order to has in order to take a decision, it has to do the prediction. It has to do the prediction. Okay. There is no such thing as certain. Okay. Everything is prediction when it comes to AI. So we feed the data, that we feed the scenario, we feed the environment, thereby it learn the environment, learn the environment, then trying to predict what would be the possible best emergency path to reach the safe zone without losing the fuel by safeguarding the lives of the passengers. We use AI here. We use AI a lot and lot here. This is called predictive modeling. And think about the rocket launch. Think about a rocket launch. Rocket launch is, is not an easy thing, okay? 
after we launch the rocket also we have to be very vigilant about what it is doing before we launching it also we need to be very sure so in order to predict whether we are good to launch the rocket we are using ai because this ai system far better than human being taking all the data from random directions all the data whether data environmental data okay whatever data we fed to train the model we 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 use numerous data to train the model it analyze all the data finally it will take a decision okay we can launch or we cannot launch okay. the scientist will take a decision sometimes against the computer sometimes again the computer based on the experience they do if a computer say don't launch they don't do they don't do most probably so these kind of predictions we can do by using ai before ai evolved we have used general intelligence i mean very very ordinary intelligence we use in ai there we use in data there it was of different algorithm different approaches but nowadays we use predictive modeling lot and lot by using ai on these mission planning spacecraft design understanding space dynamics and everything okay yeah and <clears throat> this is all about satellite imagery and telescope observations so we are doing remote sensing as well as space sensing using these telescopes these telescopes are nothing but spacecrafts okay and we are having satellites orbiting in our orbit to capture the details about the earth so it is taking informations about the geography about the geospatial in pita scale in pita scale okay the the data is pretty much big data is pretty much big so we need to find a way how to screen those data how to remove the unwanted data how to have the right data thereby to extract the useful informations thereby to benefit the human being okay so we need to know that art that art is coming from computer vision techniques computer vision techniques okay see here image enhancement feature extraction object detection okay and classification of objects this are all this are all possible because of this computer vision and the underlying principle of computer vision is nothing but convolutional neural network convolutional neural network okay so let's see uh, more about this computer vision so these are all the different practices we can do with the help of computer vision different practices starting with the image classification what do you mean by this see this image is a lunar surface image we have a crater and we have a pit this is the crater this is the pit on a lunar surface image so image classification is all about using the ai to check each and every data and to locate the right data maybe our requirement is is to locate the right data from the satellite images aboard the uh, satellite images to i mean our aim here to locate the uh, spot from the satellite images where we must be having crater and pit about the lunar okay if this is our task we have to go through set of images or we have to go through all the data for a human being it would be really impossible to check each and every data and finally choose the best one okay we can't do that so we introduced image classification computer vision techniques it will check all the data and it will it will uh, it will uh, find the right data for our requirement this is called image classification then coming to image segmentation okay image segmentation is all about pixel wise classification of the whole image so what do you mean by this pixel what do you mean by this pixel see suppose this is a 2d image 2d image is where we have just spatial dimensions no band it's a single band okay suppose it's a 2d image uh, for example the height of the image is 50 and width of the image is 20 so how many pixels we do have here 1000 pixels sorry uh 15 into uh 20 100 pixels sorry 100 pixels we do have here okay so among those 100 pixels 
whichever pixels are indicating the crater is colored in <coughs> blue whichever pixels are indicating the pet is colored in green colored in green and the and other portions are colored in yellow so this is called image segmentation this is called image segmentation or semantic segmentation okay and coming to object detection so this is like uh, drawing a bounding box drawing a bounding box on a desired object what do you want to look so we are drawing a bounding box this is nothing but a region of interest so this is the region we are showing the interest so we are drawing a bounding box and we are showing it to the community so here this is the crater and the bounding box color is blue so maybe there are different colors we can give it can take automatically also so it is taking blue automatically and for a pit it is taking color green so like that we are drawing a bounding box on a particular object uh, with the different colors schemes with a note also and these techniques are known as object detection techniques and coming to e e coming to instant segmentation we are doing the object detection as well as image segmentation so this is just an image with one crater and a pit. This is our objective. And we are given with an enormous image. We have an AI system of four pipeline. Imagine four pipeline. The very first pipeline is classification, segmentation, followed by detection. The last pipeline is instant segmentation. So this is our desired output we want at the end. Think about the collective service of this system. When it is deployed with a camera, I mean, vision of the satellite, okay, it will take the data, it will do the analysis, it will find the right spot, it will find the right insights, it will give the insights to the nearest station, I mean, the wherever it want to deliver. So this is how things work out, people, coming to computer vision, okay. And this is also very crucial, data compression and transmission data compression and transmission so we have satellites orbiting around the earth taking images of both the earth details so when it is taking images those data is pretty much huge right so we have to compress the images on board now to compress the image on board we can use AI model also okay there's a trick there's a tactic to use AI model to compress the image once we compress the image, we are transferring image. We are transferring the image to the uh, ground station. Transferring the image to the ground station. Okay. So the ground station received the compressed images, and it will use the AI decoder. This AI decoder is again a computer vision techniques. AI decoder. It will decompress the images and apply the segmentation. This time, the segmentation is known as semantic segmentation because look at this image okay there are very similar patterns but different colors so each color is indicating the different uh, different area for example this green portions might indicate the rivers and the red portions indicating the forest and the purple portions light purple portions might indicate the building blocks who knows so this is how we apply the semantic segmentation on the satellite imagery using the computer vision techniques so that a digital system would understand easily, a human being would understand easily what it captures in a sequentially. Got it? So this is known as data compression and transmission. This is where also we use AI systems a lot and lot. And coming to this one, anomaly detection and fault diagnosis. Okay. Anomaly detection fault diagnosis. This is uh, related to denoising, or this is related to outlier detection and removal. So, what do you mean by outlier? What do you mean by noises? The data coming with the main data totally making no sense. Totally making no sense. Okay. If you take out an image, if you take out an image, uh, especially for a satellite images, there are distortions. There are shades. There are some unnecessary informations. 
So we have to remove those informations properly. Then only we can have the features. Then only we can apply some filters on those features to have the right information from that data. This is called anomaly detection and fault diagnosis. And we have anomaly detection AI systems exclusively, exclusively for certain operations. Okay, for certain op operations, and we use AI a lot and a lot here. And this paper, actually, very reasoned one, talking about uh, uh, remote sensing data, how to clean the remote, how to screening, as well as how to do the anomaly detection on a remote sensing data using AI. Because people are doing it, people are applying it. Still, people are doing a lot of research to improve that system. Okay, this is very, very crucial. Everywhere people are thinking about it. Okay, how to apply AI, how to uh, put more smartness into AI, more intelligence into AI to produce software applications to handle the very large scale satellite images, to extract the features so that take the decisions very quickly and smartly. People are actually working in greater scale on this quest a lot and a lot okay guys yeah this is actually a very very interesting example uh artificial intelligence and geoscience the journal base you can find in google okay please get this research article and read it you would come to know how in satellite imagery powered with ai okay and this is entirely different topic autonomous navigation and control Autonomous navigation and control. Okay. See, this is a spacecraft. If this spacecraft want to analyze a uh, nearest, uh, near, I mean, this, this could be an asteroid, this could be a comet, this could be a planet, what would be it? If an asteroid want to analyze it, it has to deploy. If a, if, if a, a spacecraft want to analyze it, it has to deploy its computer vision units. It has to analyze each and every portions about this object. Okay, it has to bring the digital twin of it. Digital twin. I mean, it has to produce the surface model by completely analyzing the particular object. And and if the spacecraft want to come near to this object, those informations are also filtered using these computer vision techniques. So this is known as guidance and control, part of the autonomous navigation. Coming to this one, terrain relative navigation. What do you mean by this? Think about the scenario where we landed the rovers on the Mars. Okay. So we deployed computer vision units uh, from the carrier where we have the rover. Okay. So it will search the right spot to learn. It will search the right spot to learn. So until then, it, it, it uses its control systems to deploy the uh, RCS, okay? Thereby, it will find the right spot and it will it will deploy the uh, rovers on the right spot, okay? So they have used computer vision lot and lot. Just imagine this SpaceX Falcon 9 landing, Starship landing. So after they deployed the payload, I mean, the first stage coming back to the earth to land. During the re-entry, it deployed its computer vision units that, that is actually tracking where to land. It will track the sign of land pad. Already it is in the pre-programmed trajectory, but, it, but still it will always think about finding the right pattern of the landing pad. Okay. So automatically it is taking the feed giving the feed to digital computers it will analyze the feed okay it is making sure okay i am we are in the right track uh, right trajectory to land this is how this terrain relative navigation is working out here we use computer vision techniques control system optimization techniques a lot and lot collectively we use just like how we are using uh, uavs and drones nowadays autonomous drones we, we deployed computer vision unit there. So it is taking the readings about the surface. Thereby, it is making sure how much altitude it is going and in which direction it is, it is, it is maneuvering. Everything it is deciding itself just by taking the observations from the computer vision units. Okay. So this is called camera-based machine vision. 
and we use lot and lot these applications in flight vehicles along with computer along with control systems optimizations okay control system optimizations collectively these two systems uh, working to produce autonomous behavior working to improvise autonomous behavior for a space vehicles yeah and this is really really important this is known as satellites station keeping satellite station keeping or danger avoidance okay so uh, when in space when a spacecraft or a satellite is is, is rotating in a pre programmed trajectory all of a sudden if it faces some uh, emergency criteria where it has to hit an object for example it has to cross over okay it has to take a deep bend and cross over at that time it will deviate from its pre programmed trajectory and it will cross over and it will get back into the orbit again this is called a danger avoidance so how come these spacecrafts are getting this intelligence because of the computer vision units as well as control system optimization so these control systems whenever doing this danger avoidance calculating the fuel reserve also propellant reserve also okay and battery power also it has to work smartly to optimize all the systems online at that moment so that it wouldn't affect the long run of the spacecraft so this intelligence is given to these flight vehicles due to the revolution happened in ai as well as computer vision okay yeah and this paper is talking about how particularly we use ai i mean reinforcement learning approaches for adaptive covariance tuning in the kalman filter what do you mean by this what do you mean by kalman filter it's one of the computer it's one of the control uh, system technique there are different types of control system techniques classical controllers modern controllers intelligent controllers so this kalman filter pid comes under classic controller mpc comes under modern controller and this um, intelligent controllers where we use reinforcement learning partially or reinforcement learning completely so what do you mean by adaptive covariance tuning so this is purely meant for danger avoidance danger avoidance are if there is any stability disturbances happened for your flight vehicles if if the flight vehicle is not actually following the pre programmed trajectory then there is a stability correction so control system will calculate how much rate the stability should be corrected to retain its a uh, pre programmed trajectory pre programmed path this is why we are using ai we are about to use ai i mean we are using ai but we are about to use reinforcement learning the search is going on a lot and lot there okay. so if we develop our skills on the reinforcement learning especially if we learn how to boost this art on uh, i mean the adaptation of reinforcement learning with control systems definitely we will be learning close and close for sure okay this is very very crucial people and like i told already multi sensor data analysis and enhancing situational awareness so this is crucial <coughs> multi sensor data analysis so we have so many sensors we have in you know, so many instrumentations electronic devices installed in your flight vehicles it is taking data in random directions feeding all those data to the control systems even the data comes from the computer vision unit is also given to control systems so control systems has to get the coefficients or insights from those data then it has to produce one equation it could be one dimensional equation or whatever be it it has to produce the equation it has to solve those equations to produce degrees of freedoms based on that degrees of freedoms only your vehicle will follow the next state next immediate state and it's highly continuous and highly sequential till it will end only your flight vehicles come to land like that it is working out this is something like a man with super intelligence sitting there and 
observing everything and taking decisions okay quickly to pilot the thing equal to autonomous okay highly intelligence autonomous would say this is possible due to ai and this particular technique is known as data fusion and integration so this data fusion and integration is powered by ai a lot and lot people and comes to our rover so we have so many rovers on mars okay and uh, people are doing lot of interesting investigations in earth also to build the outstanding rovers okay so this is nasa's perseverance and this rover itself coming with totally 23 cameras engineering cameras are nine science cameras are seven see entry descent and landing cameras are seven these are not just cameras <laughs> these are mm, camera based machine vision camera based machine vision units so engineering camera will take care of the suspension dynamics the movement everything science camera is taking care of the research and probe entry descent and landing cameras are taking care of uh, how to learn the rovers in the right spot during the reentry okay, during the entry into the mars atmosphere okay so these are not just cameras so definitely there must be a centralized control systems which is taking investigations about the health of these camera based systems as well as which is taking intelligent decisions how to safeguard everything which is taking intelligent decisions how to make the path planning how to take the decisions how to control everything okay so this rover is nothing but the, the the one of the best example for how to use the ai in flight vehicles okay we have our uh, rovers which are flying on mars too okay we have uavs so now you can have the idea right so how we are using the camera based machine visions taking readings and how we are feeding the readings to control system so that control systems could take a decision smartly intelligently to safeguard everything as well as fulfilling the mission okay. you can extend this idea into deep spacecraft satellites aircraft military aircraft rockets whatever be it you can extend this idea into that uh, into that also okay so this is the this is how we use the ai people in aerospace and because of this ai the space exploration got its new heights okay we can't deny that fact and uh, what we have covered so far so in the second half of the session we started with <clears throat> ai advancements in the space exploration ai advancements in the space exploration we started with pattern recognition process is all about data analysis then how to use the analyzed data as a working data for a model to do the predictions and regarding the satellite imagery data science okay how exactly we are extracting the insights on a large scale of data okay and the different computer vision techniques image classification image segmentation object detection instance segmentations and how exactly data compression and transmission is done in a satellites okay how we are using ai decoders there then anomaly detection and fault diagnosis how to clean your data how to support the ai to get the insights in a quick effort okay that's all about anomaly detection fault diagnosis and yeah of course we we dealt with autonomous navigation and control one of the important feature here is terrain relative navigation of exactly we landed the rover on the mars surface okay and the satellite uh, orbit station keeping and danger avoidance how we are how a control system is taking a collective decisions of both safeguarding the satellites for a long run okay. and uh, of course the rover part you can extend this idea into all flight vehicles because the all, all the flight vehicles come up with just taking data wherever we have the data it would be really easy to implement the ai that is the power of ai you just need to explore you just need to explore 
that's it you can use these scientific advancements to explore your environment once your exploration is done whatever you explored put it into a hard drive and give it to ai it will learn it will learn okay and it will replace you <laughs> in the next scenario okay so this is how ai is working out people so it will feed on data it will feed on the environment then it will take the wise decisions um, about how to handle the situation coming to space exploration things initial but we can send robots autonomous thinking robots long run robots we can send rovers okay so definitely this ai supported space exploration a lot and lot to thrive because of that we human beings are the one finally getting benefit we are building all this stuff to benefit ourselves we are not building all this stuff to harm ourselves we are doing all these to benefit ourselves you have to note that point okay yes and coming to the final part of our today's session careers in space technology so there are so many roles and designations available i am just giving you the headline of it so you can become a data scientist you can become the machine learning engineer you can you can be a guide to produce the software applications you can become a guide to do the search you can become a guide to control the i mean project manager to control the entire mission so space agency always welcomes the people who are having a skill with ai they must be having the problem to mind knowledge as well as the ai tools techniques adaptation they they will welcome each and 